just stand and get ready to praise the King of Kings. Thank you, Father God, that we've come here today, Lord, that we're expecting to see signs and wonders, Father God. Breakthrough, we're going to be set free in areas we've never thought were possible. Father God, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are going to overflow today, Father God. I thank you that Pastor Ian is anointed to preach up a storm, that the worship team is going to sing along with the congregation, Father God, all to glorify your name and to give you honour and praise where it's due, Father. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Father, we just thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, I believe. 
believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church.
above every night and Lord as you you can see and you know what I have in my hand Lord we've got a, a nine year old as a possible bowel cancer lymphoma of the bowel no in Jesus name no that name that's above every name Sylvia's granddaughter it will will live and, and have a healthy life that lymphoma will not be there in Jesus name it must remove itself in Jesus name it must remove itself we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you as Sam's mum goes, uh, Nan goes in for that operation. That cancer will be totally removed. That's where faith is, Lord. But she said, please get the church to pray. And we stand together with the Lord. The surgeon's hands can be swift and sure. And we'll remove everything and she's going to come out, Lord, rejoicing and praising you because you are the name that's above every name. On the earth, under the earth, every sickness, disease must bow its knee to the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the healing of, of Lisa and Nick of her, her battling um, flu, those flu symptoms. Those flu symptoms have to leave in Jesus' name. We cannot allow it. No, 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 no. We say no to the devil and we say yes to Jesus. We say no to the devil, to the headaches, to sickness, to see that headache from, from John. John's body must leave now. Oh, yes, Lord, John's Lord. Johnny, you're healed, my friend. Healed, Lord. Healed, Lord. Healed, Lord. Healed, Lord. Healed, Lord. Hallelujah. As we're going to continue to sing that, if you've got sickness on your body, I want to anoint you with oil this morning. You know what do we do? The devil wants to give us a go. Well, I'll tell you what, too late. Because the name of Jesus is above every name. And we're going to stand and we're going to declare that goodness. We're going to declare that grace. We're going to declare the health and the healing of our family. This is our family is touching. And let's refuse to allow it. Refuse to allow it in Jesus' name. So as we sing about that name, reach out your hands and go, Yes, Lord. And you want me to pray for you. You come down the front, I anoint you with oil. Because God is in the house. No, where He is, no sickness, disease, no lack can stay. So let's take hold of that this morning, church. Come on. We believe in a full gospel. Amen. Get our mind there to be.
you are this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh. Hey, Sarah, why don't you bring your new baby out here? Come on. I wasn't going to do this. I was going to show you a photograph. But we didn't know babies in the house. Hallelujah. And what we want to pray, baby came out blue. And then we're praying and the family's praying. And now we have such a... Oh, my Lord. Can you catch that with the camera? I don't know whether you can. This is such a... Awesome. According to the doctors, five minutes. Well, you know what? God sent her from heaven just for you. So I should know all the names. Names. Weight. Date. Birth. Weight. Eight pound four in the old school. Uh, what do you want to know? Her name? Her name. Penelope. And the length. Length. Are they how many? 50 centimetres. There we are, because that's the thing you're supposed to know. A little baby. I want you to stretch your hands out too, baby. The baby will grow up in the instruction and the admonition of the Lord. And may mom and baby serve you, Master. Lord, we lay hands upon her. Okay. Ladies, we lay hands upon her. And we just say thank you, Lord. Her and baby. Another member of our family, Lord. Another member of our family. We thank you for supernatural health and healing now. In Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn around to somebody and say, Hi, welcome to church. Love to have you with us. Isn't God good? Hey, we don't like that flu, hey? We're going to rebuke it in your family, your friends, everyone. Welcome to all of you on live stream. Hallelujah. Welcome to Talyogam and New South Wales and people. Bless, bless, bless. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. I've just spoken to this young lady who's new. Welcome. Hi, guys. See, it's a pastoral thing. We recognize your faces. Spy. There's a uh, family over this side. If you can give that new partners uh, thing. New partners. New partners. A welcoming guest thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching today, so I don't need to waffle at this time. I just wanted to welcome all and welcome you all again by live stream. And if you're here for the first time, it's really wonderful to have you with us. And we have tea and coffee, and people will look after you. Wonder to have. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, you want this? I think, because Dada. Are you doing the announcements first? Or? Okay, cool. Yeah, no announcements. All right. My dad is supposed to do today. He's not too well. Right, so he's healed in Jesus' name. Amen. My God does that. Um, so today, I'm spe- God put a particular per- like group of people in my heart today, but everyone can receive from this, I believe. Um, he kind of opened my eyes to the fact that there's a few people that, that haven't been able to give financially because they just haven't had the finances. And if that is you today, who have you've had the heart, you want to give, and but you know you literally have no finances to give this is 
your day, I believe that you're going to have breakthrough. This is the day where you're going to tell the devil to stop lying to you because he has. He's been trying to say, God can't bless you because you're not giving into the house or God can't do this because you haven't given financially. Listen, I'm not making excuses. If you had the finance to give and choose not to, that's a different story. But this is mainly for the people that have no finances but are desperately wanting to give. But today's the day we tell the devil you cannot lie to us anymore because the Word of God has got um, multiple things about what you can do if you haven't got the finances. So today I'm, going to, I'm, I'm believing that there's going to be some breakthrough in this area. I'm going to read from um, Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. If you listen closely to what Adonai, your God, says, observing and obeying all the mitzvot. Mitzvot is um, the Jewish word for commands. And so I'm just going to read to you a bit about some of that which I'm giving you today. Adonai, your God, will raise you high above all the nations. So now, um, some commandments that God's given us in the first five books of the Bible, some people know it as the Torah, 613 small commandments, such as, you know, feeding feeding the, the hungry, clothing the people that are unclothed, giving shelter to the homeless. These are all things that financially really cost you nothing. I had um, a situation where we moved into a nice big house and financially we were just making the cut with everything and doing our tithes, but someone was desperately needing shelter for a week. We opened our doors and this is, this is what I'm going to be talking about. If you do things like that diligently where you have no finances, the finances are going to start rolling in because it says here, in Deuteronomy, if you obey the mitzvah, the laws and commands that God has given you, a blessing on your city and a blessing on you on your countryside, a blessing on your fruit uh, um, of your body, the fruit of your land and the fruit of your livestock, the young of your cattle and flocks, a blessing on your grain baskets and kneeling bowl, a blessing on you when you go out and a blessing on you when you come in. Adonai will cause your enemies attacking you to be defeated. They will be advanced on you one way and flee before they, before, in seven ways. Adonai will order blessing to be with you in your bonds, in everything you undertake. He will bless you in the land of Adonai given, that your God has given you. Adonai will establish you as a people separated out for himself, as he has sworn to you. If you will observe the mitzvah of Adonai, your God, and follow his ways, then all the people on earth will see Adonai's name. His presence is with you, so that you will be a, a, they, they will be afraid of you. Adonai will give you great abundance of good things, of the fruit of your body, the fruit of your livestock, and the fruit of your land. In the land of Adonai, swore to you that, is, that, that he's promised you by your ancestors. Adonai will open for you his good treasures, the sky to give your land its rain and the right seasons and to bless everything you undertake. You will lend to many nations and not borrow. Adonai will make you the head and not the tail and you will be only above, never below. And I love because the end says, if you will obey these, these mitzvah, these, these, these small commandments that is given you, you're subject to your livestock. I mean, today we don't have livestock, but we've got our pets, we've got our children, we've got our vehicles. You know, um, if, if you can obey God in the small commandments and you do not have financially, there it says, it says it right there that you are going to have it. And you know what, um, as Pastor Tony will say, time is money. And if you don't have the money at the moment and you give of your time, it is going to soon turn into the finances that you are needing. It is going to soon turn into the finances that the devil is robbing from you. So today we say, to hell with the devil, as my dad would say, to hell with him. He cannot lie to you. So Father God, we just thank you that right now we have breakthrough, Father God. I'm speaking, Lord Jesus, to the people where the devil is trying to lie to and say that God can't because God can. I thank you, Father God, you're going to help us, show us, give us visions, give us ways, Father God, that we can sow our time and our seed and our finances into you, Father God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that blessing upon blessing is on us, Father God, because you said it so in your word. And it is a great word, Father God. I thank you. You are the King of all kings and the Lord of all, Lord. And you are the ruler of our finances, Father God. Do you want to, um, I prayed before we even took up the offering. So let's do that. We can pray again. Double blessing. Double blessing. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
let's just reach out our hands. Thank you, Father God, that you know the heart of every person here today, Father God. I thank you that nothing goes unnoticed in your presence, Father God, and in your eyes, Lord. I thank you that you know people that are righteous, Father God, that have good hearts and good intent, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that right now we call upon the covering of your blood that says that we... We have abundant finances. Because we're covered by your blood, Father God, we have more than enough. We have more than enough. As of this point, Father God, we have more than enough, Father God. Every need is met. Every bill is paid. Every debt is cleared, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for finances upon finances, favor upon favor. I thank you, God. We acknowledge right now for the breakthrough that we're going to have. And we say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for the things that you have done, that you are going to do. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are grateful for everything everything that you have blessed us with, Father God. Nothing goes unnoticed. And we just want to say, Lord, we appreciate you, the highest praise, the highest honor and glory. It's your name and your name alone that gives us this breakthrough. And we just say, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. You can now do the old waffle. I've been preaching. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Okay, thank you, team. What we're going to do first, you know, we, next week is a uh, week of prayer and fasting. Would you like to give out all those um, uh, cards? They should be ready to give out right now. Where are they? Sorry. This week, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing it this week. Come on, just give them out to everybody. You say, why are we going to do this? We can take a little bit of time and with some pens. And say, why? Wow, we change the service around. If you're visiting, you don't have to do this. But if you're local, I'd get into it if I was you. <laughs> Hand out those cards. Now, what they are, everything is going to uh, flow around this. If we would, just hand them at the end and hand them along the rows, if you would. What, are, what this is, is this week we've got prayer and fasting week. And as soon as you get them, you'll have a look on them and you'll see there's prayer requests. And there is, what are you going to fast? What are you going to do? What are you going to be a part of, of this week? I'm going to minister now, but I want you to take this time to be a part of it. If you're part of this family and you're watching my live stream and you are, you can go to the website when I get to the next part of it and you'll find a whole list of what we're going to be praying for. What we need for you to, to do is to quickly now, if you need a pen, do it. Otherwise, fill it in right now what you are fasting. Did you get the form? We didn't get, hey, we didn't get any of this side, guys. Did anybody get, not, you didn't get any of those cards. No, no, no. Can we have some of this side? No, no, the records, that's it. That's it. Well done, Joe. Don't worry. There's all these rows that need them. Hand them to them. And if you need a pen, please hold your hand up. And just say, why are you doing this? Because it's quick pen fire technique. Don't take it home and think about, well, maybe I should do this and maybe I should do that. Oh, okay, I'll put that in. Okay, we got, where's the cards? You got cards? There's still cards here. Come on. And then if you need some pens, quickly fill it in. You've got a prayer request. We'll pray for it every diet over the week. And in it, it's got what you're going to fast. Now, there are many things that you can fast. What it do is going to cost you something. I will go through that now. But I want you, they're going to, in two minutes, they're going to come back with the offering baskets. And you're going to slot those in. Why is that? Whether you can come every night next week or you can come one night or you can come two nights, we as a church family believe that God over the last couple of years has instructed us to do this, to pray and to set the visions and the goals because a couple of weeks after this I'll be sharing and launching vision, structure and everything we're doing, teaching course, everything for this year and a five-year plan for HFCC. Amen. So I want you to be part of it. And some of you may think, oh, well, I can't get there tonight, but I can pray at home or I can fast. For Diane and I, what, what we do is we will have a protein drink in the morning and a small lunch, and then we'll go 24 hours around to the next thing. There no food. We, we um, take uh, different vitamins. You've got to have something to go with them. So we do it with a protein drink in the morning, a lunch, and then we go right the way through uh, then. And it's... Uh, it's a really good way for us to do it. I'm just telling you what we do. But it may be some of you, if you're a little younger, may need to fast Facebook, texting, or whatever you do or you keep up with, FaceTime. 
Come on, Twitter. Which other ones have I missed out? All that, all that sort of stuff. It, what it's going to do is the time that you're going to take to um, not do those things, the time that you can have free, you're going to have more time to spend with God. And I'll share with that now. So fill them all in. Are you filled them in quickly what you're going to fast? Come on. Don't argue with your pastor. Amen. I can see somebody going, but I don't want to. Yes, you do. <laughs> and it may be TV. Some of you may be addicted to TV. Some may be addicted to your computer. And you say addicted. Yeah, they can be. It's an idol. Rugby starting next week. For those of us who like rugby, and because the American football season's finished, you say, are you waffling? No. Rugby's coming. Goes from season to season. Okay, maybe we don't do that. Maybe we decide we're not going to watch the TV. We're not going to watch the rugby. We're not going to do this. Amen. Or whatever. Don't mind me like that. Okay, come on. You're all looking at it. And the ones that you, I'm telling you, I know the cards that come. You don't have to put your name on it, so I really won't know who's filled it in. And those of you going away, if anybody's away, well, you've all gone very, very quiet. It happened last year, I think, as well. We can give you one more one pen. What are you going to do? Oh, husband and wives, what are you, what are you going to do? One meal a day. And then um, prayer, prayer, prayer. We want to share with that. So. Is everybody done? Or is there anybody here who hasn't filled that in? Hallelujah. Lex, there's a lady next to you in the blue. I haven't... Hello there. Nice. Yeah, it's you. You knew I was talking to you. Hey, hey. Welcome. But if you're visiting with us, please don't free. But we'd love to have you join us. I don't know whether you're from the area. As I say to all our guests, I reckon we've got the best church in the world. So, And if you're not going anywhere, that's fine. We'd love to have you back. But if you are, go back to your own church. We don't have to go back to our church. Whatever. I'm going to pray. You're all starting to smile at me. Is that right? That, that anointing. Okay. Are we ready to collect them? If you haven't filled it in by now, what you can buy? Quick pen technique. Because when you get home, the Lord will remind you what you've done and what you should be doing. Amen. Come on then. Let's, let's collect them all up. Is that okay? Pass them down the end of the road. That'd be a good thing. Pass them down the end. That may be a, a, a quick, quick thing. Uh, oh, two ends of the row. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really with it. I want to preach now. Okay, which way? Either end of the row. For those of you, yeah, I'm doing well this morning. Are you ready for me to preach rather? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. And um, can you switch me on, guys? I want to say to you, the, the prayer meeting, that was the only announcement. It starts at... Um, Seven o'clock every night. But uh, Jim and Lynn will be opening up the auditorium, the sanctuary from half past three to seven when we start. Diane and I will be here at half past five, quarter to six. And, but Jim and, and Lynn will be opening up the auditorium if you want to come in and pray by yourself. Uh, if you don't want to be out in the dark, that is also fine. And um, if anybody wants to come during the day, uh, Marcel and I are here during the week and the staff are here. You just come and ring on the board. We'll let, let you in and set everything up so that you can come and pray during the day. Is that okay? We believe that um, everything is, is uh, based in prayer. And uh, that good? Everybody giving those in? Hallelujah. We won't check up on them. Is that okay? But um, hallelujah. Live stream I've done. Now, a live stream as well, um, when you came in, you were given one of these, one per family. Did everybody get one? Okay. Hold your hand up if you didn't get one. Okay, guys, can you hold the re hand the rest of these out? There's some people who didn't uh, receive them, if you would. This will give you the schedule, and this is what I'm going to preach from this morning. This is going to give you the schedule of what we're praying for um, during this coming week. In order that you can stick it on your fridge, that if you can't get here, you can go there and know that between 7 and 8 or whatever time God tells us to finish, we will. We'll try and keep it at 7 or 8, but we know people have to work. But again, this is an essential part of what we do as a church family. Okay, is everybody watching? Oh, there's some more over there. Thanks, guys. Do they want, uh, we got any more left? There's some more people over here. There we are. Doo -doo. All right. Are you going to get them? There's that 
family behind you, Sean. You give them that one, I'll give you some more. There we are. There we are. The lady's got her hand up. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, you may say, you know, are you excited about it? Absolutely. Some people won't be excited about, about prayer and fasting in that length of time. But to be honest with you, the reason for us doing it like this is because the scripture is very clear about unity. And the unity that God brings comes, after that comes the anointing. We do not want just church, a letter of the law. We want an anointed service, an anointed time with God, an anointed uh, ministry, anointed lives. And I'm excited about this week and what we're going to happen because the theme of it, as you saw, was heeding the call of our bridegroom. And we are going to draw closer in intimacy and in different areas that God has got for us at this time. Amen? And I, I can assure you the message is, is fine. You won't, it's not all doer and down. Like some of you look at me and thinking, oh, what's he going to preach? But I'm excited. I'm excited because I see the end result in people's lives change. I see the end result in a community change. I see the end result as our churches throughout this nation growing and the vision we have growing. Amen. And so we're going to minister from that list. And now I need one because I don't know what, I don't know what list it. I'm going to go from one thing to another. I'm going to have another one, man. I just wanted the heading because it was Monday. I got it back again. So okay, I got my notes, but. Actually, probably that I'm, I'm far ahead of my notes. But what is prayer? Father, I thank you that you will anoint me to preach in a way that will be clear, there will be understanding. And I thank you for it right now, Lord. May your presence speak through me, cause increase to come to people. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. I am so in love with God. Every time I get in the house and every time I get in here now, it's just His love. And that's what I want to say about prayer. When we're talking about prayer, what, what is it? What do you feel it is? For me, it is two lovers communicating. Two lovers sharing heart. Two lovers being able to get together like God did with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. And He manifested incomprehensible love to them. But Jesus did that for us when he went to the cross. That's incomprehensible that man would lay down his life, but God would lay down his life for you and I. And so it is in this relationship that we begin to call in. And in John, don't need to tell John 15, he says, I don't call you servants anymore, but I call you friends. But what God wants us to take us to, and as a church we've known this for years, is a place of intimacy like never before. I believe that's where he's calling us to be. But in prayer, we need to get to that place of intimacy. And normal relationships kind of flow like this. The stage one of a relationship is normally casual. You speak about things outside. Stage two, you begin to talk about things that you think about and you feel. You begin to trust. And then stage three is a deep trust when you begin to talk about your dreams, your mistakes, and your frustrations. You begin to talk in a little different way. And then you have that stage four, intimacy, where we sit quietly together with one another, experience a presence beyond words. We sit together understanding that Christ gave his life, that we may have an intimate relationship with him. And then the fifth part is where we're going to get to, I believe, as a church, and that stage five is union. I become one with that person, speaking, feeling, and acting with his reactions. And I've said his it is like Diane and I have been married um, 44 years this Friday. have been together 49 years now. And sometimes, I don't know, you've been married a while, you drive down the road and suddenly you'll see something and both will say the same thing at the same time. It is like you've become that one with her. Christ wants us to be one with him. And the reason I'm going to stress it throughout this time, the reason we come one with him, not just for ourselves and the relationship that he wants, is because the world has got to see the difference in us. The world has got to see Jesus alive and moving through us and touching a dying and lost world. Amen. And so prayer is not doing something, but being with someone. Until I become one with him, until... I become the expression of Christ. That is the object of where we're going as his bride. We want to become his expression to the world. When they look at us, they see him. What about fasting? Now, 
many types of fasting I just said to you. Fasting can be an awesome tool in getting you to where you want to go spiritually quicker. But it also can be a, a problem because it, becomes, it can become a religious thing that we do. Jesus spoke about the Pharisees and he said, Jesus actually said, when you fast, fast, not if you fast. So when you fast, don't be like the Pharisees and Sadducees and all the seers. Don't do it to be seen of men. So when you go out and you're fasting, be, in, be assured to have your, your best face on, your shoulders back, your head up, and you smile whether you're hungry or not. And you replace that. But it's not a religious burden to you and I. Our goal is that our, the righteousness that God wants us to be will prevail. Personally, church, family, wherever we are. Amen. When we're talking about a fasting, it should never become a self-informed, self-inflicted wound and punishment. That was never the intention of it. It will cost you, but it will not be that way. You know, when I, I think about Brother Hagen, and he used to live a fasted life. He wrote in one of his books, I can always leave, I always leave something on the plate. Well, I don't know about you. I was brought up in the East End of London in a family. If they put food on your plate, you ate it. And my mother said, don't you leave it. Newsly, it was the greens and the cabbage and the things that you left. But the family we came from, if the food was on your plate, you eat it because you don't know what you're going to do next. And so that's very difficult. But I said, yes, it's a fasted lifestyle that we really would love to, to live. Amen. Isaiah 58 verses 6 and 7 says this. Is this not the fast which I choose to loosen the bonds of wickedness? To undo the bands of the yoke and let the oppressed go free and break every yoke. Is it not to divide your bread with, hunger, hung, with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house when you see them naked and cover them? There was another part of that verse. I just wanted to just check it in the, in the in 58. No, and the end of that verse, it says, and I want you to make a note of it if you're taking notes, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. It's going to come up in, in the message. I only noticed this this morning. The, everything we do is to, to break the bands of yoke, let the oppressed go free, etc. And there is something that we've got to look at in our own flesh when we begin to fast. Amen? And, and I say to you, if you are fasting a meal or one or two meals or whatever, if you want to be a part of what this scripture is saying, take that money, put it in an envelope, give it to Jim and Lynn, who our missions coordinators, and we'll make sure it gets flowed into the right areas. If you want to do that, not saying that you have to, but I, I believe that the, we're going to see the oppressed go free and break every yoke of bondage. We're also, in this time that we're together, we're going to be able to not hide from ourselves. I want you to go to Psalm 62. This was my foundation for what I'm believing for this week, okay? Psalm 62, verse 5 in the Amplified. It says this, My soul wait only upon God and silently submit to Him, for my hope and my expectations are from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense and my fortress. I shall not be moved. With God rest my salvation and my glory. He is my rock of unyielding strength an impenetrable hardness, and my refuge is in God. Verse 8, trust in, lean on, rely on, have your confidence in Him at all times. You people, pour out your hearts before Him. God is a refuge for us, a fortress, a high tower. Pause and calmly think of that. When I begin to think about my expectation, I expect marriages to be healed. I expect bodies to be healed. I expect minds to be set free. I expect God to turn up at our meetings, but to also be where we are going with this. I expect the miracles of God, the physical healings. For the Holy Spirit told our apostle that this year, 2015, is going to be a year of visitation, manifestation, demonstration. Supernatural increase and breakthroughs too. That's what I'm believing for in every area, spirit, soul, and body. But I'm not just doing it because I think it's a nice thing to do. I believe it in my heart. I see it in the Word. And therefore, I am declaring it, discussing it, putting it out there. You know, for years, we've been, we've been, we are heritage of faith. And if you're watching my live stream, you'll find that if, if people talk to you and say, oh, you're part of that faith 
camp. Well, you know what? Yes, I am. Because medical science, and I, I listened to stuff by uh, Dr. Caroline Leaf. I don't know any of you heard of her. Well, you know, Caroline Leaf talks about how you turn your short-term memory into a long-term memory. She talks about how you build new channels, dendrites and, and, and memory trees in your brain by the confession. And everybody turns around and says, oh, that vain confession business. I nearly jumped when I watched her last week and I said, yes, Lord, there is a medical reason. There is a reason that we do the confession of God's word. Why do I speak it over you? Why do we use the word of God every week? Why do we speak when you come for counseling or sharing? We always take you back to the word because the word will renew your mind. The word is going to see you get to that next level. And I believe that's what we do. And so in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says this, there's, there's a word to everything... That, I'll paraphrase it. To everything, there is a season. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. And then on 2, it says there's a time to plant. And if there's a time to plant, there's a time to reap. I believe that we're going into a new season as a church. I believe that we're going into a new season with the way we do things, how we do things, how I preach, how I teach, how I train you, how I lead you onto a path of destiny for you to succeed in what you're doing. And part of that is the way we're going in prayer and fasting this week. We have set some things in place and we're doing some things that you will receive in the next couple of weeks from us, from the pulpit, about how we're going to flow, how we're going to lead you on a path of, of calling in your destiny. Amen. And so what are we going to do? I had all the headings already written, so it's fine. I did have it. Monday, what are we going to do? So we're going to fasting and we're praying, and we're word of faith, and we're confessing, and we're believing. And if you can get here every night, I would recommend you do. There is something that happens when we submit ourselves in that way. But get as much as you can. But if you cannot, I encourage you to pray at home, for we will be praying for you. On a, so on Monday, we're talking about healing for the whole man. And we know that Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. We know he gave his, li his life so that we may have our physical health, spiritual health. We can get born again. And the word for salvation or saved is the word soteria. So when we look at that, the word says soteria means to rescue, safety, deliverance, health, protection, preservation, soundness, and wholeness. Wholeness, nothing broken, nothing lacking. There should be wholeness in our lives, spirit, soul, and body. But when I picked up on, um, and we'd put down Hebrews 12, 6, it says that God will um, discipline us, lead us in the right direction, discipline us as children. There's one thing that when we start to pray sometimes, and it was the end of verse 7 in Isaiah 58. It says, and, thou, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. With that, and I went, you're right, Lord, because that's the confession. I have to know and understand who I am, what addictions I've got, what hang-ups I've got in my flesh. Amen. And God, through this time on Monday, I believe not only because we're declaring the goodness of God over our life, but he's going to come. And if we will come openly, there will be some things that maybe have held you back for years that will get broken off Monday. And if that's the only night you come, that's great. But I do believe that if we can get to a place where we look at ourselves on that Monday and go, there's healing for the whole man. Spiritually, physically, mentally, addictions, uh, hang-ups, whatever it will be in your life, I believe we're coming with the idea it's going to get broken off your life. Amen. We're not coming here just, you know, and I wrote the word there, habits that bind you. And it may be your tongue, it may be your eye, it may be your whatever, a habit. It may be overeating, it may be undereating, it doesn't matter. Those addictions, those things, I believe God is saying, if you will examine yourself, come Monday, pray, we're going to see them broken off. Secondly, hunger. That is on day two. It brings change. If you go to Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 in the Amplified. And you're either thinking about the fasting, or I'm really not preaching as, as much as I'm enjoying myself. 3 verse 10 in the Amplified. For my determined purpose is that I may know him, 
that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing, understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. And that I may in the same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection, which it exerts over believers. And that I may so share his sufferings and be kindly transformed in spirit into his likeness, even to his death. What I wrote here, it has to become our determined purpose to become hungry or a spiritual hunger to develop in us. Otherwise, we will never become a powerful instrument of Christ. If closer communication with God is not a priority in your life, we will never have that power of God flowing through us. And you might be asking, well, how do I do that? Isaiah had the same problem back in his time. He said, he, he made a quote in Isaiah and he said, hey, listen, there's nobody who, they're falling away from you and there's nobody who's stirring themselves up in order to find you again. Isaiah says that, and the word I looked it up for stirreth means to kindle afresh or keep aflame. What actually happened is, and metaphorically they're saying there, if the fire can die, it can be built up. And those people of Isaiah's time had allowed the fire to die down instead of, and he's saying, you need people to come by decision of your will saying, no, I'm going to be fired up from God because there's one thing that will dampen your fire and it is divided interest. Go with me to Mark 4 in the Amplified. Divided interests are how your walk with Christ can die out. Mark 4 in the Amplified says, then the cares and anxieties of the world, distractions of the age, pleasure and delight, false glamour and deceitfulness of riches and the craving and passionate desire for other things creep in, choke, suffocate the word and it becomes fruitless. Because if Satan can distract you, it's very unlikely that you'll become a threat against him. So he doesn't have to do much. He wants to distract you with everything. So you have to think about this and say, well, on Tuesday night, we're going to come and we're going to be stirred up with a need and a decision made to hunger after him, to hunger after him in every area. Amen. Because we can do it. We can specifically pray that way. Then on Wednesday, there's a subject that really you'll love. And that's, I want you to go to First Peter. And it, I talk about holiness. And ever I, I, I do that, people get this impression that we're sucking on lemons or we've got to be religious. That's not what holiness is. Holiness is about the person of the Holy Spirit who's on the inside of it. He's a great person to have around. And in 1 Peter 1.15 in the Amplified, it says, But as the one who called you is holy, you yourselves also be holy in all your conduct and manner of living. So on Wednesday, we're going to be praying about living in righteousness, not sucking lemons, not being judgmental on the world or whatever's going on out there. But we're going to walk in a place of righteousness and uprightness and right standing with God. And that's basically what that is. A manner that is pleasing to God. But on Wednesday, we've got to understand that we need to come close and recognize the person of the Holy Spirit has a, a, a yearning over you, a love for you. And he wants to be that close. He desires you to walk holy. And he will give you the strength and understanding to do it. James 4, 8, it says, Dry, draw near to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Well, we're not the sinners. We were. But he mentions again double-minded, and that's what I want to pick up on. He says, in the Amplified, wavering individuals with divided interest. Now, I know this may sound hard, but it's not really. Close communion with God is the key to becoming a vessel of honor and an instrument of Christ. James is telling that Christ is inviting us to come, but you've got to make the decision to come. And in fact, when you look at it, go to um, 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Here's what Paul is saying here. In, in 2 Corinthians 7, 1 says this, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. I could say perfecting intimacy in the fear of the Lord, the reverential and worshipful fear of the Lord. Paul implies here that we must approach this idea of a closer relationship with, with Christ seriously. Okay? And um, I, I've been studying this uh, this week, and um, 
kind of a number of things come together, so I'll just expose myself spiritually and in, in my life to you, which I hope will make a, a difference in the way you see what I'm talking about. Uh, Diane's my wife's birthday. Those who are here visitors know I love my wife. Been been married now 44 years. But two weeks ago, it was her birthday. And for a number of years, we've, she goes and buys what she wants, okay? She so goes, what she wants, fine. And it's become a habit. I forget to get a card. And I always tell her in the morning, forget to get a birthday card. Oh, yeah. So it's come, it was like a habit. Mm. This year, I'm starting to, to read this, and it didn't seem to bother her too much but who knows daughters hmm so my daughters back then they said dad you know you really ah, I said mum doesn't mind about that she knows I love her she knows they said dad you you no, I've done it for years man they will be okay I don't like birthday cards anyway they're money making racket that's what sorry that's a man thing so anyway so anyway I'm studying study and Ali goes, really, and my daughters, there was more than Ali goes, but it suddenly came in because on Friday was our wedding anniversary. So this time, I know I may be foolish, but I really wasn't that stupid. I thought, I wonder if she really did get upset. So anyway, I said, Lord, I don't want to do that with my wife. So I went and made it special. We had different things go on. And I wrote this as I was preparing because it kind of shames me a bit. It says, the things which are important to her must be important to me. And I wrote that down. I thought, well, how's that That's really spiritual? Because what was the last time, Ian, you asked me what was important to me? And so when we're looking at this particular subject, this thing, it is every morning you get up, and now I have, and I've understood it. And I said, Lord God, what is important to you today? I know I'm important to you. I know people are important. But what is it that you is important to you that you want me to do today? Because you know what? We can be in this. I've been in this 34 years. And I love him, and I'm with him all the time, and I'm praying. But you know what? I can't remember last time when I actually sat down and we were talking. I said, well, what's important to you today, Lord? So what's important to Diane is important to me. What's important to God is important to you. But he loves you with a yearning love that you've got to understand. It's like a burning fire for him. He will protect you. He will guard you. He will look after you. He will never hurt you. And so you're watching my live stream. You've got to understand where I'm coming from. God wants you like this. And then, of course, I had to ask the question. I said, Lord, she likes scrapbooking. I said, I have to go scrapbooking, do I? And now he didn't give me an answer. But you know what? I can take an interest in her scrapbooking. Because what we did is when I watch football or rugby, she'd go upstairs and does scrapbooking. I invested in a scrapbooking room so she wouldn't huck me. So she wouldn't. I did. I think that was wise. But now what he's saying is you don't have to do everything. And so I'm saying, catch me closely now. We do not have to do everything our wife or husband does do. But it must be important for us to be able to relate that. And you know what she told me yesterday when we were talking about this? And I said, oh, I'm going to share this. On the night of her birthday, I was going to take it out. And we decided that we were going to go to our daughter's house because the grandchildren uh, love to be with us on our birthdays. And she said, that's why I went. She said, but also, and that's what I heard, I didn't want to go to supper with you. I didn't want to have a meal with you. I said, Why? didn't think of enough for me to buy my birthday card. So it's with, with shame, if you like, I say that, because I think most of some of your visitors, but, and you know me by live stream, that's my heart. And, and the impression that we give, when we don't care for others, when we don't care for the ones who can do nothing for us, when we do not care for the poor, the afflicted and the downtrodden, when we don't care for those that are not in part of our flow. Hey, watch out. And I'm not being hard. This is me. Okay, if I stepped on your toes, please, in order to come along and fix them up. 
Normally it's Tony who does this, and then I give you the gravy and sugar. But it's Tony who normally gives you the veggies. Amen. But, but you understand where I'm coming from. I've exposed myself because suddenly I realize what's important to God. The reason that we're coming and praying, because it's important to Him. And I don't want to miss that. Hallelujah. So we, we move on from that. And then it kind of, yeah. Is that okay? Everybody get where I'm coming from. Next time we get up. God, what's important to you? Number Thursday. Number Thursday. Number four, Thursday. Harvest. We're going to pray about the harvest. One heartbeat. But again, let me remind you. God is going to use you and me for the harvest. So he's saying to you, don't get distracted. Don't get divided interest. Because if you do get divided interest, you will not be such an effective vessel for Christ. Stir yourselves up. Remember, because I want to ask you a couple of questions. Do you truly want to be an instrument of revival? Do you truly want to be an instrument of revival? How desperate are you to see His power operating through you? I know I am. I am desperate for that. Psalm 63, verses 1 and 2. O God, Thou art my God, early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsteth for Thee. My flesh longeth for Thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water, where, there, where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory. Let me ask two more questions. What are you willing to do to see his power and his glory? How important is this in your life? God is going to use you and me to bring people to him because they will see you. Remember, we've, we've preached about over the last week that Paul came not in by the word only, by the word and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. It's the only thing that is going to take us to that next level. And so what uh, we're saying to ourselves is in Corinthians 6.12, Paul talks about everything is permissible, but not everything is good for me. I can do everything. It's, it's fine. It's permissible. I'm, I'm beyond so and stuff. But it's not good for me. It's not good for us if it affects the fact that we've got to be a representative of Christ to lead people to the throne room. God's power will begin to flow through you to help others. Now listen to this. To be set free from the power of darkness. We are the light of the world. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We are the ones that will come. We'll speak life over that body. We'll speak life over those people. I want to encourage you. You're very quiet, but I want to encourage you that it's the right thing today. You've got the, the ruler, the king of glory on the inside of you. You can do this. There's nobody here who can't. Let me ask you a simple question as well. How many have family or friends who are not saved? Or how many of us have family or friends who have known Christ and have moved away from Him? I reckon every hand would go up if we said show it. Now it is not up to us. We can't get people saved. But it is up to us to represent Christ well. Amen. To represent. When it was nice, you're walking through a shopping center. Someone comes up to you and says, wow. You're shining. What is it? It's Jesus. You just represented him well in our words, our actions, our deeds, our integrity. The world is looking for us to be character, people of character. And that's what we got. We're going to bring in the harvest on Thursday. But again, God wants to be our partner in ministry, working in us, through us, to set the captives free. Amen. And then on Friday, some of you are going, Oh, I'm glad we got to Friday. <laughs> Friday's a good day because it's going to be about worshipping the King of Kings. Amen. Worshipping our Lord. I, I'm, I'm also believing that through the week, we all have a time of testimonies of God's goodness and of His grace. We're coming for that evening. Also, we're going to have a time of, of after, after the meeting, we're going to have a time of fellowship and food. Hello, my blessing. You come in, my darling. This is my wife. Hello. He said, why you stop the service? Everything stops when the queen walks in. <laughs> Come on now. Is that right, darling? Sorry. <laughs> if you're watching my live stream, my wife came in as well. I can do that. I'm the pastor. You know, I like tough. Women. It's great. I score, you know how many score cookie points I scored with that? Big, huge, humongous cookie points. <laughs> Normally, it's the other way around. And do you remember that old song that we used to sing, Make Me uh, an Instrument? Make me an instrument of worship. 
I believe that's what's going to happen on Friday. We have gone through probably some turmoil, some changing. Uh, if you need a Band-Aid, you need any of the pastors, or me particularly to come and minister to you and love on you, because, hey, you've checked yourself out. You've prayed for others. You're putting yourself out there. Now is the time to come to where we can worship God. And this is what our Sunday services should be about. Our Sunday services are, in fact, a celebration of God's goodness and His grace. Yes, you will hear me preaching and, and, and sharing the, the things of God, but what we're going to have is, is a time of just resurrection and rejoicing and loving. That's what we should be, as well as me teaching you. But you'll see this coming here. Uh, Tuesday nights and uh, Thursday nights and Friday nights are going to become our teaching, discipling, going deeper, road to destiny nights. And we're going to have, we've got lots of stuff coming for you guys. So we're, we're taking you on a road. But this Friday night, when we come next week, it's a time of restoration. It's a time of refreshing. Because uh, while the worship team comes, we're coming in the right uh, attitude, the righteousness, the right fear of God, the reverential fear of God. It will spare. Let me tell you what I believe it is. The reverential fear of God is not a fear of His power and righteous retribution, but in a wholesome dread of displeasing Him. The reverential fear of God will inspire a constant carefulness in dealing with others. I.e., to fear the Lord is to have so much love and respect for Him that your greatest desire is to please Him. And in fact, on Friday night, we'll just confirm Him as King upon our heart. Uh, Shame will I for those of you who were here, weren't you? He used a phrase, are you going to be a war horse or a donkey? Amen. And then what was that? Are we going to demand or are we going to serve? Are we going to come and give not just to him and serve him, but give him that which is his due? And through that, it will enable us to draw others unto him. Hallelujah. So, as, as you can see, having thought about, about this, we have a, a title for each night, but the Lord has the direction for each night. I have an idea where we're going. God has got the plan. And so, while you're praying for us, pray that we would hear what God wants, because it's all about him. Amen. And while you're sitting here, and if you're watching by live stream, I'd like you to bow your heads, close your eyes. And we would like to ask, is there anybody here this morning or watching by live stream that does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If you're here today, you're here this morning, and you're watching this morning, and you don't, today is the day of salvation. Today is a day where you can give your life to Him for the first time. You can, if you've moved away from Him, He'll restore you back. Or if you've never heard about salvation, because you've gone to somewhere else that's religious, that you can have a relationship with Christ. Then come on in. Become part of the family of God. Is there anybody here that would raise their hands and say, Ian, that's me. I need Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're not talking about joining a, a religious order or a church. We're talking about having a relationship with Christ. Is anybody here? Hallelujah. Well, Father, we thank you right now before we close in prayer that um, should there be somebody uh, watching my live stream, that they would simply say, Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me clean with your blood. I accept you as Lord and Savior. Change my life, Lord. Be with me, lead me, and guide me. Amen. And I thank you, Lord, right now. As we leave this place and with an excitement to get together to fellowship and throughout this week to know that we're praying according to your will and purpose, Lord. I thank you the hearts are stirred this morning. Stirred, stirred, stirred. To be hungry after you, Lord. You're our healer, you're our God, you're our master, and you're our king. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Holy Spirit, was there anything else, Lord? Hallelujah. Why don't you go and stand to your feet and we'll dismiss.
We're going to go praising God. We'll see you tomorrow night. We'll see you for fellowship if I haven't had a cup of coffee with you. All the, the, the servants of God, the usher hostess will show you where to go. Church, you need to love on people. Make sure they're welcomed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go.